Christ. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Gabi. Gabi, señor Tahat. When I was putting on my microphone, Deacon Marlin reminded me that uh, Deacon Marlin here, my companion from my community, Society of the Divine Word, said that this reminds him of the Taylor Swift microphone. <laughs> so I got to thinking that I have to sing something. Yeah. Look at what you need me do, what you need me do, look at what you need me do. But I thought maybe better than that, I could sing one of the few songs I remember in the Gambo. And if you remember the song, feel free to sing along. Mahiwaga anguhay ng tao Aruga sa ita'y natin biro At manalit lagi sana tayo Ang Diyos ang pag-asa ng buto Please sing along if you know the song. Pag-ibig sa ating kawalao At laging magkahanan tayo Yan ang dunas at ligaya at pag-asa ng bawat kalupa. Yan ang dunas at pag-asa ng tao. Patagpakan po natin ang ating sarili. So the song we were singing talks about life being a mystery. And for me, it is quite mysterious that isang katulad kong puti, kagaya po na may matangos na ito, at nasa harapan niyong nagsasalita ng pagkakaroon sa inyong pagdiniwang ng simong gabi. If that's not mysterious, that a white guy with me with a very long nose would be speaking to you in Tagalog, I don't know what a mystery could be greater than that. But the truth is that I was very privileged, as I said, to spend about four years on mission in the Philippines. Nagalo po ako ng Tagalog sa Yupi Los Panos sa Laguna. Bago na distino ko sa kabundukan ng Silangang Mindoro, kung saan ang aking misyon ay naganap sa tabi ng mga katutuong mangya. Pagkatapos naman, na distino ko sa isang parokya sa Antipolo Rizal ng Talawapang Daon. So within those four years, I studied Tagalog at the University of the Philippines in Los Panos, Laguna. I spent a year serving the indigenous mangyan people in the mountains of Oriental Mindoro and then had the privilege of serving for a couple of years in a parish in Antipolo Rizal, close to Manila. And so, brothers and sisters, it's been about 17 years since I left the Philippines. And the mystery is that until now, kahit ako'y umalis sa Pilipinas, hindi na alis sa akin ang Pilipinas. I left the Philippines, but the Philippines does not leave me. The memory of the tradition of the Sibang Gabi, the beautiful decorations, the songs, the sights, the smells, the sounds, masarap ng pagkari, the delicious food we'll be enjoying, enjoying after the Mass, all of it kind of transports me back to the Philippines, and I'm sure the same is true for many of you. And for those of you for whom this is a new experience to be with us for Sibang Gabi, we are so very honored and happy to share this tradition with you as we celebrate these nine days in honor of our Blessed Mother. And so, uh, my primary role in my community right now is vocation director. Pero kuminsan ang tawag nila sa aking vacation director. Kasi maaagi ako ng nabibiyahe at nag-iikot para hanapin ang mga gusto mag-ari at sumali sa aming komunikasyon. Sometimes I get called a vacation director because of my frequent travels around the country to look for, encourage, and support young people who are discerning God's call. And in that role as vocation director, I'm on the road about 90% of the time. So you can imagine, I spend more of my time in the airport, on the plane, in the car, in the hotel, on the road, kumakain sa makdo, kumakain sa Jollibee, eating at McDonald's, eating at Subway and Jollibee and all those places. So what is very important to me as a frequent traveler are the signs that I see along the way. Not to mention the GPS that helps me not to forget to notice the signs along the way. This is my first time coming here to Church of the Holy Spirit. I had to use my GPS to get here. Fuck, I'm all without a hole. I don't want to get lost. But you know, the signs are only as good as our ability to recognize them and to follow them. Meaning, ko sa inyo, ako isang tunay na lalaki. Pag pinapakinggan ko ang sinasabi ng GPS, sinasabi ko naman sa aking sarili, mas marunong ako kaysa sa GPS, gagawin ko ang gusto kang gawin. At sisigaw ko naman ang GPS, sinasabi ko, Kumana ka! Hindi ko maliwa! I have to confess, I'm a true member of the 
male portion of our gender that uh, I listen to GPS all I want, but I still think I know better. And I go right when the GPS says it goes left. So, a mystery again that I arrived here, and I got here on time, too. So signs, so important to guide us, to point us in the right direction. They aren't the essence of what we're searching for, but they help us to recognize its reality and help us get to where we're going. The reason I thought about this was that tonight, throughout our, both our first reading and our gospel, we heard about signs. Ahaz was told to ask for a sign, and he said, I'm not going to do it. And then the sign came anyway. In the Gospel reading, we heard our Blessed Mary Mother, our Blessed Mother Mary receive a sign that she probably wasn't looking for or expecting or ever could have imagined in a million years. And yet there was the sign, the appearance of an angel telling her that she, all women, would be blessed to become the mother of Jesus, a Jos, the very Son of God. Signs. Signs. More signs. Signs we ask for, signs we don't ask for, signs we don't know we need, and much of the time, signs we don't see and recognize. To add to that, tonight if you look around the church with me, you'll see lots of signs as well. We see Jesus on the crucifix. We see our beautiful image of Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe. We see our beautiful puddles and lanterns. We see our candles. We see the altar. We see one another. We see this beautiful place. So many things that help us to recognize that God is very close to us, that God is very near to us. And so brothers and sisters, as we reflect on the meaning of the signs around us, I think and I'd like to propose to you that there are three primary little points of wisdom or lessons that we might take from tonight's celebration. And they all have to do with signs. The first is, that in this whole story of Advent and the preparation for Christmas and the gospel we heard tonight of Mary being called to, to bear the Son of God in her womb, the most important sign of all is one that's already been given us. And it's not the crib where Jesus lay, but the cross where Jesus would give his life. Because every symbol of our faith emanates from and leads back to the cross. And what is the cross if not the greatest sign of the tremendous love of God for his people? God who came into the world through Jesus as a baby, laying in a crib, and then eventually giving his life on a cross to show us the way to God by loving those around us. So the cross, if you will, is the crossing and intersection and the binding together of the two greatest commandments of all. Ibigino, ibigino ang panginoon niyong Diyos ng buong isip, kaluluwa, lakas, ang puso. Love the Lord your God above all things with your whole mind, heart, and strength. And the second command, ibigino ang niyong kapwa gaya ng niyong sadili. Love others as you love yourself. Everything points to that reality that God so loved the world that indeed he came down out of heaven in the form of one who looked like us in the sign of a human being to show us and teach us how to love and live in harmony with one another. And as we celebrate that mystery, we then in loving one another are gathered up in our humanity which is lifted up so that we may become more like God. So the most important sign of all, brothers and sisters, is the cross. I'm very sure, but I think of sa simbahan kanina, pagpasok niyo, anong ginawa niyo? Ginawa niyo sana ang tanda ng cruz. I'm very sure when you arrived tonight, you made the sign of the cross. Ano ba na ginawa nating tanda bago tayo kumain? What do we do before we eat? We make the sign of the cross. What do we do before we pray? We make the sign of the cross. What do we do when we're driving down the road and we pass the church? We make the sign of the cross. And everything we can possibly do, everything comes from and leads to the recollection that the most important sign is already right in front of us. Now that leads to the second point. I said there were three. I have to be true to my word, right? So the second point about signs 
is that I believe we are not just called to see and recognize the signs around us, but we are, in fact, called to be signs of God's presence. Tayo mismo, bawat isa sa atin ay tinatawag ng Diyos upang maging panda ng kanyang presensya at pagmamahal para sa ating mundo, para sa isa't isa. So the question is, what kind of sign does my life provide for the world? Ano ang magkikita ng mga tao gawa ng aking mga sinasabi, ng aking mga kilos, ng aking halipaw? In what direction does my life example point other people by my words, thoughts, and actions? Am I a sign that leads people closer to God? Or by my way of life, am I perhaps leading people to another way? To question or doubt their faith or to invest more in things that are not of God? They say that we are called to be witnesses. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, it's not really a choice. Meron kasi akong isang pamangkin sa edad ng sampu, magiging laming isa siya sa isang buwan, si Chase Alexander MacDonald. Maliwala kayo sa akin. Kung ano man ang sinasabi ginagawa ko, pinapansin niya, pinapakinggan niya, at isasabihin niya sa akin kung hindi nakakaisa ang sinasabi at ginagawa ko. I can tell you this is true because I have a 10-year-old nephew and next month, Chase Alexander McDonald, and he listens to and watches everything I do like an eagle. And he has a radar for inconsistency. When I say this and do that, there's Chase to correct me. So we know this is true. We are giving witness all the time, whether we realize it or not. Tinitignan tayo, kinapakinggan tayo, sinisilip tayo ng kapwa natin, sinusubaybayan po tayo sa social media, kaya People are watching, they're listening, they're following our social media. So the question is, how do we become intentional about the kind of sign we want to be? Anong gusto natin ituro sa ating kapwa na sila'y mapatapit sa Diyos kaya in this na umayo? We have to decide what kind of witness we want to be, what kind of sign we want to be. And finally, number three, the third point about signs, I believe, is that if you think about it, Ilang tulog na lang, Pasko na, that's true. How many more sleeps, as we say in Tagalog? Ilang tulog na lang, I love that translated into English. How many more sleeps until Christmas? Just a few more sleeps, a few more days, a few more nights. Ilang tulog na lang, Pasko na. Ilang tulog na lang, pagkatapos ng mismo araw ng Pasko, at babalik sa dati ang buhay natin. Balik sa trabaho, balik sa mga tao na kasimamon, balik sa mga tao Right? Christmas will come in a few days, and then after that, a few days later, we'll go right back to the way things were. Too busy to pay attention to one another, people will start frowning again, as if Christmas never happened. Tatanggalin po natin ang mga paro, alisin natin mga decoration, Christmas trees will be gone, the lights will come down. All the signs that reminded us Christ is coming, mawawala, they'll be gone. So, the third point is, how do we make sure that even though these signs and symbols around us will be gone, and even though the Christmas season will come and go, that the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of God's love for us, and our love for one another, is not ever going to end. And my proposal to you then, is how do we do that? Is that we think about what is God's particular call for each of us? in terms of our vocation. Remember I said I'm a vocation director, not a vacation director? <laughs> so forgive me for being shameless and promoting vocations tonight, but uh, it's very true that each of us, ang mabutisa sa atin na minigyaganan sa isang magandang simbahan kagaya nito, ay tinatawag ng Diyos sa kanyang-kanyang vocation sa buhay. Every one of us baptized that a beautiful thought like this is called by God to his or her proper vocation. Now, ilaan natin sa Panginoon ang buhay niya ipinagkakawag sa atin, dedicating and returning to God the life that God has entrusted to us. So for me, the best way to be a sign that carries on the spirit of God's love, Christmas season or not, is that each of us commit to our God-given vocation. 
Maybe you've already said yes to God's call in your life. Maring naka oo na kayo sa inyong mister o missis, di ba? Pero kaya yung bukas yung ilang magkasawa. Umingi kaya kayo sa Panginoon ng grasya isa buhay araw-araw ng tapat ang pinili niyong bukasyon at sinabi niyong oo sa niyong asawa. What would it look like for those of us called to the vocation of marriage to ask God for the grace to live faithfully and to say yes each and every day to the handsome or beautiful spouse to whom you've committed your life? What would it look like for the young people among us who are still nagisi? nag-iisip pa rin kung ano ang magiging landas nila sa buhay, ano kaya kung buksan nila ang kanilang puso isipan sa posibilidad na sila ay tinatawag ng Diyos upang maglingkod nilang isang pari, nilang isang deacon, nilang isang brother, nilang isang sister, nilang isang committed lay ecclesial minister. We have these two fine examples right here of these young people who are giving their time and their talent to serve at the altar. And I noticed a very young person over here in the choir. My goodness. <laughs> if as young people we are able to think of how God wants us to be a sign of His God's love for others, and we are open to how God might want to use us as His instrument, Tremendous things can happen in our lives. So to help you to say yes to your vocation or to choose the vocation to which you are called to say yes, meron akong dalang mga vocation prayer cards. So makikin niyo ngayon ito. So I brought some prayer cards along. They have a picture of the founder of my religious community, uh, St. Arnold Jensen, uh, the founder of Divine Word Missionaries, of which Deacon Marlon and I are members. And he also started two congregations of religious sisters. The Holy Spirit Missionary Sisters, Alam Yosef Divinas, and Blue Sisters, Kaya Holy Spirit College, Sakizan City, Okaya San Carla. They are run by the Holy Spirit Sisters and the Holy Spirit Adoration Sisters. Okaya yung tinatawag natin mga pink sisters. The pink sisters of perpetual adoration. Sa Baguio, sa Davao, Sakizan City, at dito rin sa U.S. They were founded by the same priest who had a vision of men and women working together collaboratively to be signs in our world that God is with us and that we are called to bring God to others. So I invite you as you leave church tonight to feel free to pick up a card. Uh, there are some on the table or they will be given to you. And I just invite you to consider making these prayers your own, a prayer for my vocation. It could be, again, the vocation you've already said yes to and asking God the grace or it could be sa pag-iisip mo tuloy kung anong magiging mong landas sa buhay. What would be your vocation? So brothers and sisters, as we continue our celebration, as we look around us once again and see various signs that God is very close to us, the light getting brighter, the light of Christ very close to us, and of course, again, the most important sign of all, the cross, that intersection of our love for God and love for one another, the intersection of Christ's birth into the world as a baby and his giving his life on the cross as a great act of love. Let us ask God for the grace to live our lives after the example of that cross. May we always seek the grace to be signs of God's loving presence so that Christmas will never really end and Christ will always be in that well, Christ with us. As the psalm today said, let us open the gates wide so that the King of Glory may come in and make a home in our hearts. Pagpati ko po sa inyo ng isang matigayang Pasko, masaganang bagong taon, Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo, a very, very, very Christmas and Happy New Year to you.